All right, so it's like late October now, and one of the things I wanted to get done this fall was fixing the four-wheel drive on this truck. I don't travel a whole lot, so it's not really necessary, but it hasn't worked in four years, and I just never really dug into it too hard. And um, last year, there was a couple times when I really, really could have used it. Uh, the air compressor that I bought, <laughs> it was a, a very, very shitty snowy day when I went to go get that. You know, and two-wheel drive just did not work. So I really, really missed my four-wheel drive. And this right here is the main reason that the four-wheel drive quit. This is the thermal actuator. Actuates the hubs. And you can see it's definitely blown out. There's a, a little nipple right here of rubber where it just melted and oozed out apparently. So it's not an a really super hard repair um, but I found out there's a good upgrade for it to go to a stepper motor uh, electrical mechanical actuator instead of this thermal actuator. The thermal actuator is really a piss poor design because if it gets cold you might come out of four-wheel drive which cold river crossing or just running around in the snow you could lose your four-wheel drive and that sucks. I actually never had that problem not until it actually failed and it didn't fail uh, in the cold I was uh, I think it was a spring spring of 10 I was um, going up the backside of my dad's dam pond dam and I heard a clunk and I looked down and the lights were out on the four-wheel drive and I made it up and I made it out of the grass and when I got back on the gravel road I, you know, I could hit the gas and spin the tires I knew I did not, did not have four-wheel drive anymore and um, I did a bunch of moving and stuff, whatever, so I never really got back to fixing the four wheel drive. And uh, just recently, um, I think maybe when I was looking on Rock Auto for this particular part, because I was almost sure that this was bad, and I was looking for this part on Rock Auto, and then I found out about the upgrade because it has just the wiring harness that you need to upgrade to the stepper motor version. So I looked into it, and I actually ended up buying the parts off eBay for less than a hundred bucks for both of them and uh, you know, I'll put the doorman part numbers in the description or whatever um, I think my stepper motor was used like a working pole from a jump card or something I got it for like 60 bucks and the wiring harness was probably 30 shipped something like that and the wiring harness comes with the little metal puck that goes with the new actuator and um, a little uh, backstory on how I figured out that this was the problem was I do have a service manual for this truck and I looked in there and one of the things that it that it recommends looking at is the fuse and why I never thought about looking at the fuse I don't know and I was immediately pissed at myself and I thought you know what if I haven't had four drive for four years just because I didn't look at the fuse I'm gonna be really really mad so I come out and I looked at the fuse which is right here actually between the door and the dash and that little fuse panel right here. I believe it's number 24, it's like a 25 amp fuse and it was blown. So I was like, cool, maybe I can just replace the fuse and I'll have working four drive, which didn't work, I blew another fuse. So that's when I decided I needed to uh, disconnect this thing and replace the fuse and put it on four drive and see if it blew, and it didn't. So that's why I knew this was bad. and. Um, I don't know if I took video of it yet, but I actually put the power probe on this and sent power and ground to this and it kicked off the breaker on the power probe too. So I'm absolutely certain this thing failed. So I'm going to install the motor version and show a few tips and tricks on it. And um, there will probably be a, a little second video to this because I've already found another problem with the four drive. Um, at this point I already have the motor installed and the wiring harness wired up but I'm, it does not work it's because I'm not getting power from the transfer case switch and yeah I just might combine both both videos anyway but um, I'm going to show you where I'm at with uh, with all of that and hopefully get a repair of both of these in one video here's the old actuator on the right and the new one on the left and you can see why you need the puck Get your threads lined up right there and the old one is longer than the new one so that's why the puck is for and if you look right here 
you can see the uh, mishap with the old one. I think it shorted or something and melted and blew out or something right there. It's kind of cool, but that's what killed it. And here's the new wiring harness. There's the plug-in that goes to the actuator. And there's the plug that goes to the old wiring harness. And then also you have this wire down here that we have to run back to the transfer case to connect into power back there. Okay, here's um, my 95's actuator input. And if you look, you can kind of see right there is usually where people talk about having to grind it off for the new one to fit. And for whatever reason on my truck, it is not neat ground at all, and I think that's excellent. I did want to show that. Alright, so there's the front pumpkin and the new actuator screwed into it. And this is the new wiring harness. And here is the old plug and the new one. And right back here is the wire going back jumpered to key on 12 volt. And this is just uh, the front axle switch. Basically, I think that just turns on the lights. Maybe a couple other things. So what I want to check is this connector. I should have black ground. It looks like red, but power should be key, key on 12 volts. And then the blue one should be four drive 12 volts from the transfer switch. All right, so the big question is always how to wire up the new wiring harness. You see I'm looking at the rear axle, kind of laying on the driver's side looking in. Here's the transfer case, the axle going forward, and right there is the transfer case switch. And you can see my splice right there on the brown wire. The wire going on the new wiring harness is here. I think it's faded over time. It's not quite brown anymore, but I'll show you with the power probe. I do get key on 12 volts with it. So I do believe I've spliced into the correct wire. Now I also believe that this is the switch that I'm having problems with and not getting 12 volts on the other wires. There should be three wires on that and one of them should be blue and I'm not real certain that it is. So there's a switch in here that turns on the key on the brown wire 12 volts onto the blue wire and then there's also a switch that turns the last wire to ground. It's for the computer according to the schematics. So what I want to try to do to see if this switch is bad is possibly take this off and feed 12 volts to the other wire and also I guess test to make sure I got 12 volts on the key on and send 12 volts to the blue wire and see it and I guess maybe just here if I have uh, the new actuator movement and that will tell me if this switch is bad. And I guess I could also put it full drive and, make and see if I have continuity between the two contacts. Maybe I have a break in the wire from here up to the actuator. I'm not sure. That doesn't seem likely though. So let's go back forward. Alright, I hope you can see that. It's a little difficult for me to see the screen. So, red one should be power, or key on, because the key is on in the truck. I do have a red light. The one above that should be ground, and it is green light. And then it is in four drive, so the blue wire should also have 12 volt. And it just does not. So, that leads me back to the transfer case switch. And what I think I'll do is... Oh, I can do it right here. No, I can't because I need ground there. Let's see. Actually, I might be able to provide 12 volts to the blue wire here if I can also hook onto it with my 
ground lead from the power probe. I might have some kind of attachment that would make this work better. That might work. So, 12 volt. There you go, it works. So, I am confident now that the transfer case switch is actually bad. I guess that blue wire is actually pretty light blue on the truck and no, there's no 12 volt there either. I didn't expect there to be. So, I think I can kind of put this back together and leave it alone. There's a little stud the wire loom connects to up here. It uses as a holder. There we go. One for the axle switch as well. So I think we'll move back to the transfer case switch now. Not sure how well you're lit up over there. Just gonna have to do for a moment. Can you see the plug? Yes, okay. So my power probe again. And it looks like a little different than a diagram. It looks like the blue wire is the far right wire. Let's see, I should have 12 volts on the left one. I do. The middle one is showing 11.7. That's kind of weird. And what looks like the blue one is showing nothing. So I think if I put 12 volts to the blue one, the actuator should run again. Yes. Okay, so again, I have almost proven without a doubt that that switch is bad. So I'm going to go ahead and get it out off camera. And it looks like inch and sixteenth is about what you need to get it off. And luckily, mine was not on there super tight. It popped pretty easy, which is a good thing. plenty of room to use a very big, I mean this thing's over a foot long, wrench. Okay, I think I can get it rest of the way the finger. Really should have blowed that off above it first. Get all the crap off of it from around it so it doesn't get it down in the oil. There it is. There's the ball switch. So everything is still on. What I want to do is actuate that by hand while it's plugged in and make sure that it's not going to actuate. The actual, or <laughs> turn on the actuator, and I get nothing. So now I guess I could test continuity while actuating it. Oh, huh, that could be my fault. Let's see. I had that connector off there a long time ago. I was trying to figure out what to splice that into, and I have ruined one of the pins. That could be the only reason this thing is not working. Let's see. Huh. Yep. That is the pin for the blue. So, it's possible that I could just straighten that pin and have a working switch again. That'd be great. 
Okay, so power probe continuity test. If I can get the clip on the far side pin, actuate the ball. Should have continuity on the other pin. Oh, I'm not in continuity mode. Okay. I wasn't in, I didn't have the buzzer turned on, I guess I should say. So, ball actuated. Yep. So, yes, that was definitely my fault. Let's see if I can fix that. Well, I cannot get down in there all the way to get it completely straight. So, I'm just going to go after a new one. Well, none of the stores in town had it in stock, so I put a little more effort into it, and I think I've got it pretty straight now. At least enough to make it work. So I'm just going to put this back in there and retest. Well, obviously, one of the first things I want to do is to make sure that the male side of the connector is okay. That looks fine. So now I want to make sure I can get this back on there without destroying it again. Yep, yeah, slid right on, no problem. Pin still straight, so. I'm just going to thread that thing back down in there. Okay, now we're back together. So I think once I hit the key again, we should hear the actuator come on. Yep, good to go. That's excellent. Okay, so what I'm looking for is these lights up here to come on. I haven't been on in four years. <laughs> I know they actually are working now. I just want to be damn sure that I'm actually going to get into four drive. It's still in two wheel drive, but back out of the garage here a little bit. And pull her back. Wow, almost instantly. That is excellent. So now I want to hit the gas and see if I spin out get down my driveway a little bit here so I'm not in the trees. Uh-huh, you can hear that. Okay. Yeah. I can definitely tell that we are definitely in four drive. Because all the leaves and gravel in my driveway, I would definitely have spun out big time just then. Most excellent, working again, cool. Well, I guess the obvious next test is to put it back in tool drive. You can see the lights are out. There they're on, they're off. And I'm back in drive. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell that on camera, but I uh, definitely spun out. So it's going in and out of tool, tool and four wheel drive, most excellently, love it.